another day and a completely different location again. And uh, a few videos will be coming from this location because I'm currently in student accommodation provided by one of the jobs I work on. So it's a very small room, I'm not sure how that'll sound. Uh, the subject of this video is colour changing LED lights, the solar lights, because you, you get mostly single colour ones, you know, just the standard white LED. But you also get these colour changing ones that have the standard colour changing LED and they just cycle through the colours. This one is pretty flat, so you're probably not going to see it cycling through the colours, but it is. And if you were to try just transplanting that LED into here, it would not work, it would just stay in red. And the reason for that is that the colour changing LEDs have active circuitry inside them that uh, switches the, the LEDs on and off pulse of modulation style, uh, varying them on to off ratio to vary the colour. And when you disconnect the power to them, they reset to the first colour in the sequence, which is red. And because of the way these things step the voltage up, they're effectively resetting that LED all the time. So let's open these up and take a look inside. So we'll open the colour changer one up, and we'll pop the circuit board out of it. Ooh. So the battery just clips into a little holder here. There's a couple of clips here for holding the circuit board in. No screws just very simply assembled. And we'll compare it to the circuitry in this white one, so I'll just swap the screwdriver a bit. Slightly different screwdriver too, I've brought one of my more complex security bit screwdrivers with me, because uh, when you're travelling you kind of uh, don't have access to all my tools. So let's uh, pop this cover off. And inside, blame it just falls apart completely. Inside is the similar circuitry, it's got the cell on the board, but the difference is there are two extra components in the colour changing one, a capacitor and a diode. Uh, both these units incidentally use the cob, the chip on board, the little black blob on the back of the circuit board covering the um, integrated circuit. So let's uh, take a look at the theory here. The circuitry used in these works like this. You've got the control circuit. You've got uh, the 1.2 volt reel of the battery, the rechargeable cell, and the zero volt, or plus and minus if you want. And say that's connected to the little nickel metal hydride cell. That's a little button cell here. And you've got the solar panel, which is a, in this case, it's about four sections of a solar panel feeding in to the circuit and that effectively goes out to charge the nickel metal hydride cell via a diode inside the package. And what also inside the package is the control circuitry and it monitors the voltage that coming from this solar panel and uses that to detect when it's dusk and to turn the circuitry on. And to drive the LED, you can't drive one of these white or colour changing LEDs directly from 1.2 volts. In fact, I don't know if... I think some infrared LEDs might operate down to 1.2 volts, but most of them require in the region of 2 volts to operate. And in, certainly in the case of the red, green, blue colour changing ones, it is around about 3 volts minimum. In the case of just the single colour white, um, it's around about 2.5 volts before that would light. So what they do to step the voltage up is they've got a little inductor and it's the component that looks a bit like a sort of green resistor here. It's got sort of the standard resistor style colour coded bands on them but instead of being ohms that's the value in micro henrys. What is the value of this one? So the value of this one is red red brown which is 2 2 and 1 0, 220 micro henrys. And the case of the colour changing one it's Brown, green, brown, which is 1, 5 and 1, 0, 150 micro henrys. Generally speaking, the lower the value of the inductor in these, the brighter the LED will be. Uh, so this one's uh, aiming for a sort of longer battery runtime with by using a higher, a higher value inductor, which means that the LED will run at lower current. But it uses the inductor and that is then connected to the LED. And if the circuitry is not running, the current won't flow through that LED because the voltage isn't high enough. However, inside here is a transistor. And that transistor is being pulsed by the control circuitry when the unit is required. And when it does so, it draws current through this little inductor and then it turns off 
and it creates a spike. Now to demonstrate that, someone recently uh, mentioned how it's very similar to what's a type of pump called a hydraulic ram pump. And the hydraulic ram pump, it looks like this. It's a straight pipe coming down with water flowing down it. And the modern ones, they just simply turn the pipe up in a sort of U-bend and then there's a sort of port that the water can spew out and a loose ball in there. And there's a liquid receiver, a, which is a sort of air vessel, a pressure vessel, the best way to describe it, with a one-way valve coming from the pipe here and then the pipe going up to where it's to deliver the water. This is one of the simplest ever pumps. It's really old fashioned. And the idea is that water runs downhill. It runs down this pipe and it gradually gets faster and faster. It's just spraying out the end. And once it's fast enough, that ball or whatever valve they have suddenly uh, gets carried by the inertia of the water. It suddenly goes up into the end and it suddenly stops it. And you know when your washing machine is filling or when you turn a tap off, suddenly you get a loud thud from the pipes, the sort of hammering of the water. Then that's what happens. The water has got an inertia and it's suddenly stopped and there's nowhere for it to go. So you get a sudden pressure peak. And in this case, it squirts water into the receiver through that one-way valve against a sort of air buffer. And that uh, then softens the sort of... that The air buffer averages out and then it pushes it up the pipe. And these things... These water rams, they're very simple. All they do is make a characteristic thud, thud, thud noise. And water sort of sprays out the end and bursts. And these things can pump water up considerable heights. They're with no electricity or anything. They're strictly water-powered. A water ram pump. Look it up on the internet. It's very, very interesting. But the inductor is the same because, effectively, when you the current starts flowing through the inductor when that transistor turns on, and then the transistor turns off, and suddenly the current is nowhere to go. It's got the it's built up the inertia through the inductor and because it just goes open circuit you end up with a, a sort of spike of voltage and that's what makes the LED light. That's what increases the voltage to the point the LED can light. However, because the output of that is effectively a series of spikes as that turns uh, on and off, the colour changing LED would just keep res resetting to the red colour. It wouldn't go do this red, green, blue cycle. So to fix that, they put a little diode here and you could use a 1N4, 4148, a very common diode. And they use something like, in this case, it's a 100 nanofarad capacitor, 10, uh, hold on, it's 104, which is 10 zero and four zeros. So that's 100 nanofarad, because that's measured in picofarads. Um, and that softens, that that averages out. So you still get a slight spikiness, but it doesn't go right down to zero. So what you end up is a sort of base voltage level with the spikes on top. And that's enough to actually keep the memory of the LED, so to speak. So the LED is probably still strobing when it's uh, run like that, but uh, the it will never go completely to zero, which that's all it's needed to keep its position in the colour sequence. So if you do want to convert one of your standard solar lights into a colour changing one, all you need is that little 1N4148 diode and that uh, capacitor just to act as a little reservoir so that the spikes, instead of where they'd have gone through the LED, go through this diode instead, charge up the capacitor and that just acts as a small reservoir for that. So that's how the uh, colour changing LED lights work. It's not a lot of difference in the circuitry, but it makes a huge difference. It's uh, the only way you can actually get the colour changing LEDs to cycle properly.